Welcome to 100 Yards of Football. Today we got our college team preview, and today we're going to preview the Texas Longhorns. If you like the video today, please come in and share it. The two gentlemen that be helping me break down the videos are very now in knowing college football and pro football. I'm your host, Vincent Turner. So let me introduce the first gentleman. He played at Florida State, All-American. He was drafted in the 1981 draft, 25th selection overall by the Atlanta Falcons, Mr. Bobby Butler. The second gentleman, he's renowned, very talented, Atlanta Metro High School football coach. He's coached at Dutchtown, Lovejoy, Riverdale, and my Zion High Schools, my man, Kevin DeBoer Jones. So if you like the video today, as we break down the Texas Longhorns, please come in and share it. We'll surely appreciate it. So let's start with the eyes of Texas, baby. The Texas Longhorns, Mr. Kevin DeBoer Jones. Tell us what you like about Texas for the upcoming 2020 season. Well, I tell you what, this football program right here is going to be creeping up, on, up in folks' living rooms this Saturday afternoon with seven offensive starters returning on offense, and they got nine on defense. Now, so my common denominator is for this fall season, especially since we didn't have spring football practice, my common slogan is who is the gunslinger? The quarterback this fall will determine who makes it to one of those four spots uh, to fight for that national championship title. And Coach Herman has a wonderful returner coming back, and Sam uh, Erlinger, uh, Ellinger, excuse me, and uh, he's thrown for over 3,600 yards. He's a fabulous quarterback. He's tried and tested, over, rushed for over 600 yards. But here's the thing that makes him special. He has been in that system uh, at Texas playing football, and he's, you know, had a tough season, uh, and he's faced extremely uh, above-average competition, meaning he's faced the cream in the clock. Cream of the crop. Keep in mind, when they played LSU this past uh, this past season, they only lost by a touchdown. So that tells you something about being able to air it out and make things happen. Here's the key points for me. Okay, they have a new OC, which is a concern sometimes because you need the spring and the summer to uh, mature as a program. Well, they have Mike Yurchett, who's coming over from Oklahoma State where he was five and one against those same guys in the conference. Okay. So he was the OC Oklahoma state. Now he's at Texas and he had done a great job coaching against Texas. So you're talking about a veteran offensive coordinator in the same conference. That's not afraid of the opponents he's going to face on Saturday afternoon. As far as the running back position, position is concerned, it's by committee. And they had two guys that went over 1500 yards, 14 touchdowns. So, you have some veteran experience at the running back position. As far as the receivers, core is concerned, you got, once again, you have some returners coming back. Uh, Brandon Eagles is one of them, uh, and uh, Keontae Ingram is another one that's coming back. So you have some veteran guys that can help get that ball thrown around. So with that being said, offensive line-wise, all big 12 returning player, Samuel Cosim, uh, Cosme is one that's returning. Very good player, veteran leadership. So once again, skill positions, you have some returners, okay? Running back, you have a skill, a uh, returner coming back. Offensive line, you have a couple of guys coming back. And then when you flip it over on the defensive side, you have a tremendous amount of players coming back, nine on defense. Once again, viewers, keep in mind, against the LSU program last year, they were in a dogfight with them. A couple of turnovers late in the third quarter, and the game could have went another way in Texas's uh, favor. But it didn't because at the end of the day, you know that quarterback they had at, at, at LSU that just made all the plays. But a young program, and now you got nine starters coming back. Now that spells trouble for a lot of teams. They're going with Chris Ash, who's going from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense, which – as far as I'm concerned, it's easier than taking a 4-3 uh, uh, hands-down defensive end, guy that plays with his hands down, and now all of a sudden trying to make him a stand-up back on the edge and play in space. There's two different players in that position. But it's much easier to go from a 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense. So that plays in the favor of, of Texas again because they have nine starters coming back. So with Keandre Colvin, massive 
defensive tackle who was a unbelievable disruptor last year in that front and that front seven. He's returning. He's going to garner a lot of attention when people try to block him. You have Joseph Asai, the lead tackler. Okay. Sacks. He led the team in sacks. He's one of the top linebackers in the conference coming back. And as far as the secondary is concerned, you got six starters returning. Why do I say six instead of four? Because your nickel cover guy, as well as your uh, uh, dime coverage, that means you got, when you have nickel coverage, that means five defensive backs. When you have dime coverage, that's six defensive backs. So to be able to deal with those programs that like to go with empty sets, meaning all five receivers and throw it around, you got six guys in the secondary that know what they're doing. That is going to prove pivotal for the Longhorns uh, this fall. As far as I'm concerned, I think that they have the ability to really stress some teams as far as running for the conference championship. In my eyes, fellas, y'all ready for this? I feel like in my eyes they're going to have a tough season because Oklahoma State returns just as many, if not more, on their uh, team. We'll get to that another day. but think that the Longhorns are going to go 11 and one and they're going to be in a playoff game. Okay. Because they have my key things that matter to me. They have a returning gunslinger. You didn't have spring practice. You don't have, you don't, don't get a chance to work with the players that much. So they have a proven big dog right there to lead that offensive huddle. And then they have a defensive dog on the, on the defensive end. Dog means you're that tough guy. That means you are the guy. You're the one that everybody looks to in the huddle to lead the team. So you got one on the offense side of the ball. You got one on the defense side of the ball. And I'm going to tell you right now, viewers, in my mind, that adds up to a whole lot of wins. That's what I have it going down it. You see it right now. Texas Longhorns, 11-1. and one. Brother Butler. I tell you what, Jones, you're right on it, brother. I tell you, you're right on it. I think, you know, the one thing when I look at Texas – the first look kind of like ah, eh, kind of like I don't know. They got seven new coaches, yeah. right? And it's like ah, eh, we don't have spring football. We got seven new coaches. Everything is done in the classroom, maybe from walkthroughs, but we can't get no real contact, no real look or feel, you know, for what we're doing. But that being said, you hit around the head. Seven stars on offense, nine stars on defense coming back, and I thank Sam Ellinger. Hey, coach, he's a great leader. Yes, yes. He's an awesome leader. His guys love him. He supports his guys in his room, right? right? But I tell you, he can spin the football. He can yeah. flat out throw the football. And he's a big guy. Yep. And so when he runs the ball, I mean, he's running tough. Yeah. He's not running fragile, trying to slide. Bro, he's a big man. Yes, he and, is. Look, and, and he's running tough. I like him. <laughs> so I like what you said. Um, what you've been saying about the gunslinger. And we all know, if you look at the last, you know, since we were playing college, um, the playoffs in college, hey, listen, the guys with the quarterback go win it. you got to have a quarterback to win it, right? And so they got that quarterback. Uh, wide receiver room, hey, listen, they lost some guys, but they got Brennan Eagles uh, outside. They got Jake Smith in the slot. Both of those guys had productive years last, last year. They both scored six t touchdowns. Joshua Morris returned from suspension. He'll add value. But they got a five-star recruiter receiver coming in, Jordan Winnington. Yes. You know, and so yes. he's going to add some value to, to the roster. Here's what I always say this. Here's my line. Wide receivers running backs are a dime a dozen. And you're in Texas. They got those kind of players everywhere. They got those kind of players in their classrooms that are not even putting on a uniform on the weekend. That's right. We can find them anywhere. So they got that, right? The right. running back, they have depth. You know, they got two guys who played and, and played well last year. You got Kanate Ingram, ran for almost 1,000 yards last year, 5.9 yards per carry. Right. That's telling me something, seven TDs last year. Then you got quarterback turned running back, Roshan Johnson, right. who had almost 700 yards last year rushing, 5.3 5 yards per carry, and seven touchdowns. And then you got another five-star recruit coming in and Bijan Robinson. They're going to get it done. Right. But the O-line, see, I always believe we win games up front. Correct. It's good to have all that pretty quarterback, wide receivers, all the flash. But if you ain't got them horses up front, 
you know, you're going to be in trouble. Um, and, and they got that with Samuel Cosme. You already broke them down. So the offensive line is, is a great group. So offensively, they look very good. I like them. But on the defensive side, Coach, they got nine returning. Now returning, and they do have some dogs over there, right? Yes, they do. They got some dogs. They, they, they're, they're up, they're up front guys are incredible. You know, D ends, Marquez Bemage. You got three technique D, D tackle, Taquan Graham, right? Keandre Coburn, who you mentioned, right? You got Joseph Asai, who's man. Let me tell you something. He can flat out go get it. Absolutely. Now, and, and Coach asks defense, he's going to play what they call the jack position. Right. So he's going to be st- he's going to be doing he's going to be the creative monster on the defense. Right. He's going to get a chance to go get the quarterback. He's going to get a chance to go cover somebody. He's going to get a chance to do it all. Right. And so he is that guy. Right. The linebackers are, are good. Jalen Green corners. Hey, they got six guys. Just like you said, they got six guys returning starting secondary. Right. But I'm going to call one name. I want y'all to remember this name because he played as a freshman last year in the secondary. Guy named Keontae Kenyatta Watson from Grayson, Georgia. That's right. He's a local. His dad played. His dad played football from Deerfield Beach. Um, okay. I just wanted y'all to know, you know, a little Florida season everywhere ain't gonna hurt. You. <laughs> just all Florida over the place. Season. We ain't gotta have it all because it is Texas. And Texas do have football players, but just give me yeah, a little, got football players just a little bit of that curry season, you know, <laughs> down there where we eat that conch, conch fritters. Y'all don't know. That. Anyway, y'all don't know about all that right there. But they're loaded in the secondary. They got two great safeties, right? And so, hey, and here's the other thing. Their kicker, Cameron Dicker. Now, you see, here's the thing. All right, I think Texas is on the rise, right? All right? It's them in Oklahoma right now. They're in that Big 12, right? Oklahoma has dominated the Big 12 the last five years. That's right. I think it's Texas time. But they're going to be neck and neck. They're going to be neck and neck. But they got a clutch kicker. If they get in tough games, he'll be able to win the game for them. Wow. And that's going to pay dividends for Texas somewhere on this on this schedule this year. That kicker, Cameron Dicker. Go, go make a difference somewhere down the road. Remember we said that today, right? Coach, you hit around the head. I got them 11-1. Yep. I think it's Texas yeah. year in the Big 12. I it's really scary. It's scary. I, not, not to slight Oklahoma, not to slight Oklahoma State, not to slight TCU, not to slight Baylor. But it's Texas time, yep. and I think they're ready for it. Well, gentlemen, y'all brought the Texas Longhorns down more better than I ever thought you would. I have to agree with you. I think this year might be Texas year simply because what Coach Jones said. I like Sam Ellinger as a quarterback. Hey, man, he's been there three years. He knows the system. He's put up a lot of yards. And let's face reality. The head coach at Texas, Tom Herman, remember when he first got the job, he was yapping. He was yapping. He was talking big. (laughs) <laughs> okay, Mr. Herman, it's in your fourth year, baby. You said the expectation of Texas, this is what you want to be at, and you said national championships. Last year, it must have been Texas year, but they didn't have a lot of depth and they had a lot of injuries. But I'm going to say this. This year, like Coach Jones said, seven starters returning on offense, nine on defense. You got a big game against LSU on September the 12th. Everything is in your favor. And I'm going to say this, when you look at Texas football history, every time they've had a senior football player or a junior seasonal player, they've won big. James Street, senior quarterback, 1969, won the national championship. Earl Campbell, 1977, they didn't win the national championship. They played for it. He won the Heisman. And then that young man out of Houston Madison High School, Coach Jones, you know who I'm talking about. Won the national championship was a one-man wrecking crew against USC, Vince Young. So I'm putting Sam Ellinger in that same boat because you want to know why. Tom Herman, you were yapping when you first got that job. It's time for you to start winning at a high level. This year's the year for the Texas Longhorn. So I'm going to end it like this. The great musician who's out of Texas, the great Christopher Cross, had a song, Ride Like the Wind. It's the night. 
My body is weak. I'm on the run. Yes. No time to sleep. The Texas Longhorns is your time by the great Christopher Cross from San Antonio, Texas. If you like the video today, please come in and share. We are 100 Yards of Football. Have a blessed weekend and thank you.